yeah uh, welcome students so today uh, we are going to discuss communication interface uh, the last topic of module 3 uh, in the previous uh, class uh, we understood the uh, uh, sensors and actuators uh, the last topic that uh, there we understood was uh, peripheral component uh, uh, interconnect PPI uh, that is 8255 uh, sorry programmable uh, peripheral interface device 8255 and previous to that you understood how to interface and uh, uh, the keypad uh, and how uh, the keypad uh, works all these things and now today we are going to discuss uh, uh, the communication interface uh, what is communication interface uh, communication interface is uh, the one which is required for making uh, uh, the components within the embedded system to communicate uh, among themselves and also uh, you need a communication interface in order to make the embedded system as a whole uh, to communicate with the other uh, 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 devices in the world or external communication now when i say communication interface there are two things now now the interface which uh, will enable the components which are residing within the embedded system to communicate among themselves and and you require one more communication interface which will enable the entire embedded system to communicate with the external uh, world or uh, the uh, devices which are outside the embedded system. That is what we are going to discuss uh, in the today's session. Now, uh, as I mentioned, communication interface is very much essential uh, for making the subsystems or the components which are within the sub embedded system to communicate and also to make the embedded system communicate with the external world now that is what subsystem is nothing but the components of the embedded system now communication interface will enable the components of the embedded system to communicate with uh, among themselves and also makes the embedded system communicate with the external world now with this uh, perspective uh, 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 with the communication interface perspective you know that there are two things possible there are two different perspectives of the communication interface one is uh, the device at the board level communication interface or you can also call this as onboard communication interface so this is the one the device or the board level communication interface or on uh, a board communication interface will allow the components within this embedded system to communicate among themselves and similarly there is another perspective of the communication interface that is product level communication interface or external communication interface so this will allow the or enable the embedded system to communicate with uh, the external uh, devices external uh, world or uh, the devices which are external to the embedded system or the devices which are outside the embedded system you now and when i uh, take an embedded system you know, embedded system is a combination of uh, many different types of uh, components uh, when i say components it may be a chip or a device and all these components you know, they are arranged on uh, a printed circuit board or a pcb so that is what is an embedded system is basically embedded system is a combination of many different types of components and all these components they are arranged on a pcb printed circuit board and majority of you know what is a printed circuit board and you might have already seen uh, the printed circuit boards all these components you know are arranged on the printed circuit board now so the communication channel the communication channel which interconnects all these components within the embedded system within the embedded system and allows these components to communicate with each other is called as a device or board level communication interface the communication channel which interconnect all these components within the embedded system and enable them to communicate among themselves is called as a device or board level communication interface or on board communication interface now what are the examples for the communication channel that will do all these things so we have uh, two types of again uh, board uh, level communication interface one is serial communication interface and parallel communication interface and these are few examples for the serial communication interface now what do you mean by serial because here the communication happens serially bit by bit now the examples are i2c uh, you can also call it as i square c bus spi serial peripheral interface bus uh, uart universal asynchronous receiver and transmitter bus and one wire 
So these are the example for the serial communication interfaces uh, which will allow the components within the embedded system to communicate. And similarly there are parallel buses also. Now uh, what, par what are parallel buses? So they allow uh, uh, the transmission of more than one bit at a time. You know, parallel communication interfaces are, al are also available for uh, onboard communication interfaces. Now similarly the other perspective of uh, the communication interface is the product level communication interface or uh, you can also call it as an external communication interface and uh, most of the time the embedded systems are self-contained that means now uh, the, the embedded system when I say self-contained it has everything in it and it doesn't one the embedded systems which are designated as self-contained generally don't talk to the uh, 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 devices which are outside or external world. Now, on the other hand, there are certain embedded system, you know, which uh, uh, are uh, maybe the part of the larger system. And, and this system, the, uh, generally the embedded system, which are the part of the larger system, they require interaction. They need to transfer the data between various other devices or sub-modules. Now, that case, we require the product level communication interface. If I say an embedded system is self-contained, you don't require a product level communication interface because the self-contained em contained embedded systems, they are not going to interact with the external world. Now, when I take an embedded system, which is a part of a larger system, larger distributed system, so the embedded system there may require the interaction uh, with the other devices. Now, that time you require the product level communication interface. Now, one of the examples uh, uh, for uh, the product level communication interfaces, again, there are two types, wireless uh, product level communication interface and wired product level communication interfaces. Now, wireless product level communication interfaces, examples of this. Now, infrared, uh, 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 you may, uh, may be aware of this because this is why most widely used in uh, the remote uh, uh, remote say for example uh, TV remotes and many other uh, gaming remotes you know so the infrared uh, uh, IR infrared is used for uh, the communication and Bluetooth and this also all of you are aware so wireless land that is Wi-Fi this also all of you are aware so then then uh, radio frequency waves RF GPRS so these are all the examples for uh, the product level communication interface which comes under the category wireless and generally the wide medium product level communication interfaces are also there for example RS232 so and, and majority of you are already aware of this also uh, later slides I'll explain these things with the diagrams also if some of you don't know RS232 RS422 RS485 with the diagrams when I show you have already seen it, but you don't know that it's called as RS-232, RS-422 and RS-485 uh, 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 interface, communication interfaces. When I show the picture, you'll understand, you know, and you'll also realize they are uh, uh, these buses, uh, communication interfaces. And USB, and majority of you know, and there is one more Ethernet IEEE 1394 port and parallel ports also. These are uh, the some of the uh, communication and, and each of these things we will be discussing later. You know, uh, uh, in a short while we are going to discuss all this uh, wide medium and wireless medium uh, product level communication interfaces. Now, now first uh, we will focus on the onboard communication interfaces. Uh, so these are uh, the examples for the onboard communication uh, interfaces. Now what they do, uh, they are going to connect uh, the, the peripherals or the components which are within the embedded system. Now onboard communication interfaces, that is what they do. They interconnect all uh, the components or the peripherals which are found within the embedded system and these are the examples which I already mentioned. So uh, I squared C bus, uh, uh, now expansion is also here, inter-integrated circuit interface. That means how to uh, uh, interconnect one integrated circuit with the another integrated circuit. So this is uh, what the interface which you can use in order to interconnect two or more integrated circuits. You can use I squared C bus. And similarly, there is a serial peripheral interface bus also. Uh, uh, UART, Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter and uh, one wire interface and parallel interface. They, all this, each of these things we will be discussing now in detail. Now first we will focus on this uh, inter-integrated uh, circuit that is I square C bus. Yeah. Now I square C bus already, uh, uh, as I already told, it's pronounced as I square C. Uh, uh, it is a synchronous bidirectional half duplex uh, bus. Now synchronous, when, when I say synchronous, here uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, synchronization between uh, the sender and the receiver is done by using the clock cycles. 
Now ends it is called a synchronous. When I say synchronous, it is done through clock cycles. When I say asynchronous, the synchronization between the sender and the receiver is not done through the clock cycles. It is done by using uh, additional bits. That is what is asynchronous. Now, uh, why you need to synchronize the sender and the receiver? Because sometimes the sender may be too fast and the receiver may be slow, too slow. If the sender is too fast in sending the data and the receiver is not able to receive the data at the same rate, then what is the possibility of the receiver losing some data? And at the same time, the sender may be little slow and the receiver may be little fast. Uh, at that time, you know, uh, the, the sender is not able to cope up with the speed of the receiver. Now, we need a synchronization. We need to synchronize always the sender and the receiver. Now, and when I say synchronous type of communication, so the synchronization between the sender and receiver is provided through the clock cycles. So, synchronous. Now, this I squared C, uh, 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 I squared C bus is a synchronous type of communication. That means the synchronization between the sender and the receiver is done through uh, the clock. Uh, cycles and it is bi-directional that means the communication ha can happen in uh, both the direction half duplex so uh, communication can happen in both the direction but not simultaneously so uh, that is what is half duplex that is one directional communication at a given point of time now uh, when the communication is happening in one direction it cannot happen in, in, in the other direction when, when when the communication in one direction that is happening finishes the communication can happen in the other direction so that is what is half duplex bidirectional no doubt that means communication can happen in the both the direction but not simultaneously one at a time that is what is the meaning of half duplex <coughs> now uh, yeah uh, and it uses uh, a two wide serial uh, uh, interface bus and then later in the diagram i'll explain you how uh, it uses a uh, two wires so one wire it uses for uh, the clock cycles because it's synchronous i told because sender and receiver are synchronized through the clock pulses one one wire is required for sending the clock cycles and another wire for sending the data now now this i square uh, c bus was initially developed by philip semiconductors so in the year 1980s uh, now uh, the original intention of uh, this um, I square C was to provide an easy way of connecting connection between the microprocessor and the microcontroller system and peripheral chip in the television set. It was originally used in the television sets in order to interconnect the microprocessor and microcontroller system with the peripheral chip. Now, uh, I square C bus, as I already told, comprises two bus lines, uh, namely serial clock, uh, serial clock uh, called as SCL and serial data called as SDA. Now, uh, a serial line, uh, a serial clock line is responsible for generating the synchronization clock pulses. That is what I told you. To, uh, this uh, is the line which is responsible for generating uh, the clock pulses required for synchronizing uh, the sender and the receiver. Uh, and SDA is responsible for transmitting the actual data, the serial data across the devices. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, one more important thing is I squared C bus is a shared bus. That means uh, uh, to which and many number of uh, I square C devices can be connected. So it's not like there is one master and one slave. So this I square C bus is basically a shared bus. So you can have many I square C devices connected to it. So the devices connected to I square C bus can act uh, either as a master device or a slave device. That is what uh, you can connect many uh, uh, I square C devices and and. Uh, uh, the, the devices which are connected to the I square C bus can be uh, 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 can act as a master device or sometimes it can also act as a slave device. Now what is the responsibility of the master device? When I say uh, uh, an I square C device which is connected to the I square C bus is acting as a master device, what is its responsibility? It is responsible for controlling the communication by initiating or terminating the data transfer. So uh, when, when any device that is connected to I square C is acting as a master device, it has the responsibility of initiating, terminating the data transfer. It can initiate the data transfer, even it can terminate the data transfer, send data and generate necessary synchronization clock pulses also. So and, and when I say a uh, uh, slave device, now uh, what is its responsibility? It waits for the command from the master and respond upon rece receiving the command. That means it doesn't have the ability to initiate or terminate the data transfer or even generate the necessary synchronization clock pulses. Now what it can do, it can only wait for the command from the master. When it receives the command from the master, it can respond uh, to the command. Now master and slave device can act either as transmitter or receiver, regardless whether the master is uh, acting as transmitter or receiver. So that means, 
Now, a master and a slave device can either act as a transmitter or receiver, regardless whether the master is acting as transmitter or receiver. That means the slave, the, the, the master and slave, they can be either transmitter or receiver. And one important thing in this is again, synchronization clock signal is generated by the master device only. So the synchronization classic clock cycles can be generated only by uh, the master device only and they cannot be generated by uh, the slave devices. And I squares, I told uh, uh, it's a shared bus, you can connect many I square devices to it and, and the devices can be either master or slave and uh, one device can be master and the rest all can be the slaves. So but uh, sometimes I square C also supports multi masters on the same bus. You can have multiple masters on the same bus. So uh, this is how uh, the uh, uh, I square C bus looks like. So I, I told it has two uh, wires. One is the serial clock, and another one is the serial theta. Uh, you have the master and the slaves connected to it, and the required VCC is also given to the serial line and uh, serial clock line and the serial data line. Now you have the slave connected here. Serial clock. Uh, it has and serial data. Serial clock and serial data. So this is how uh, the the peripherals and uh, the microprocessor within the embedded system connected. So this is one uh, which you can use. This is one uh, uh, onboard communication interface uh, uh, bus. I squared C uh, uh, is uh, one uh, onboard communication interface bus. Yeah. Now the sequence of operation for communicating with I square, uh, I square uh, C slave device is listed below. If any of the master uh, which is uh, uh, in the I square C bus wants to communicate with its slave. What are the sequence of operation? So this is the sequence of operation. Uh, uh, first, master device will pull uh, the clock line bus to high. So the serial clock line. So this line will be pulled high by the master, and then master pulls the data line low. So the data line, this line will be pulled low by the master. So that is what the master is pulling the clock line I and pulling the data line low when the SLC line is at I logic. So this is pulling uh, the clock line I and uh, the data line low is the start condition for data transfer. That is how the data transfer will begin you know, in I square C bus. First pull the clock line high and then pull down the data line to low. That is what is the start condition. And after doing this, the master device sends the address. So uh, 7 bit or 10 bit wide address it is, it depends on uh, the devices, how many devices are there within the embedded system uh, of the slave device. So it sends the address of the slave device to which it wants to communicate over the SDA line. So the clock pulsers are generated at SLC line for synchronizing the bits reception by the slave device. Now, now every time you know, the uh, master sends the bits on the data line, so there is also the clock pulses generated on the SLC line just to synchronize the uh, slave device and the master device. So yeah, the MSP of uh, the data is always transmitted first, that is uh, what happens here. So the most significant bit of the data is always uh, transmitted first, it is not the least significant bit. So the master device sends. Uh, read or write bit say for example uh, uh, say master device whether it does sending the data to the slave device or whether it wants to read uh, the data from the slave device how it indicates uh, if the bit value is one it's a read operation that means the master is trying to read the data from the slave if the bit value is zero so the write operation that means the master device is uh, trying to write some data to uh, the slave device according to the requirement so uh, after uh, uh, sending, you know, uh, sends the read or write bit, the master device waits for the acknowledgement bit from the slave. After the master says whether it is interested reading, uh, interested in reading from the slave device or whether it is interested in writing to the slave device, you know, it will wait for the acknowledgement bit from the slave device. The slave device with the address requested by the master device response by sending the acknowledgement bit because the, the master is also sending the address you know, using the data line so the, the slave device which identifies its address is going to respond back with an acknowledgement bit uh, that is uh, it will make the value as 1 over the SDA line. Upon receiving the acknowledgement bit the master device sends uh, the 8 bit 
data to the slave device over STLI. If it has uh, a write to device operation, that means uh, if, if master wants to write the data to the slave device, then it will start sending 8-bit data to the slave device over STLI. And similarly, if it has read from device uh, uh, operation, then uh, the slave sends data to the master over the SDLI. This is what happens. Now, the master device waits for the acknowledgement bit from the device upon the byte transfer complete for the write operation. Now, uh, when, when the master is sending from uh, to the slave, uh, after sending is finished, it will wait for the acknowledgement bit. Uh, um, and, and if uh, the master is receiving the data from the slave, sends an acknowledgement bit to the slave after the read operation is complete. If the master is sending data, writing data to the slave device, it will wait for the acknowledgement bit from the slave. If the master is reading data from the slave, uh, the moment it finishes reading the data from the slave, it will automatically send an acknowledgement bit to the slave device. Now, the master device terminates the transfer by pulling the SDA line high. Now, all this time, the SDA line was low. Now, the moment the master finishes uh, the transferring of the data, either reading or uh, sending the data to the slave or reading the data from the slave, it will terminate the transfer by pulling the SDL line high. And yeah, this is and that indicates uh, 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 and the clock line is at high only. So when both are high and high, it indicates a stop condition. When uh, uh, the uh, SLC line is high and SDL line is low, it indicates it is the start condition. Now that was uh, the I square C bus uh, you understood, uh, which is uh, uh, one uh, handboard communication interface. So now the next thing is uh, the serial peripheral interface SPI. Uh, again, uh, SPI is synchronous. That means uh, the synchronization between the sender and the receiver is done through the clock pulses, and it is bidirectional again, full duplex. Observe this: bidirectional, full duplex. But I square C was again synchronous bidirectional but not full duplex it was off duplex that means it was by bi bidirectional communication was possible but not simultaneously here by bi bidirectional communication is possible simultaneously that means the communication from master to slave and slave to master can happen simultaneously so that is and here there were only two wires here you have four wire serial interface bus now yeah now uh, spi is a single uh, master uh, uh, multi slave system now, uh, SPI bus, so uh, you can have only one single master and multi -slave, a multiple slave system. Even in I square C, Karano, single master and uh, multiple uh, slaves were there. And, and it was possible to have multiple masters also in I square C bus, but only one master can be active at a time. Now, similarly here also, SPI is a single master and multi slave system. And, and if you want, you can make SPI also have more than one master one master but with the condition what is that condition is you can have only one master active at a time now spi required four signal lines for communication as i told four signal lines are required and in i square c there are only two there were only two lines one was uh, the serial clock line and one the serial data line now here spi uh, since it is bidirectional full duplex communication it has four uh, lines now what are those four lines here master out slave in so uh, MOSI master out and sl slave in uh, uh, is one signal line signal line carrying data from master to the slave so master out master is sending and slave is receiving now why we call master out because master is sending and why we call slave in because slave is receiving so that is what signal line carrying data from master to the slave device and it is yeah that's fine and master in slave output here the, the master is the receiver and slave is the sender. Signal carrying data from slave to the master. This is the another line. And serial clock and slave select. Serial clock, this is same as uh, uh, the line that we understood in I square C bus, which is used for synchronizing the sender and the receiver, uh, and which basically carries the clock signals. And these clock signals will ensure that the sender and the receiver are synchronized. And slave select is another line, uh, uh, signal line, to select uh, the uh, slave device because you have uh, a multi slave system it's a multi slave system you have multiple slaves now when when the communication is desired you know, uh, uh, using this signal line so the slave will be the desired slave will be selected and uh, this ss is an active low signal that means if you if you give zero on this line you know, so the, the the corresponding slave is active 
now uh, this is uh, how uh, the uh, diagram looks kare na as i already told kare na so it has how many uh, four lines yamo is a master out and slave in so master descending slave is receiving and slc serial clock and master in and slave output so master is receiving and slave is sending and this is uh, slave select line save select line yeah now a uh, master device is responsible for generating and here also in the previous i square c also you understood uh, uh, it is only the master which was responsible for sending uh, the clock signals correct no it is only the master which is responsible for synchronizing the sender and the receiver that means it can only generate only master can generate the clock signals it selects the required uh, uh, slave device by asserting the corresponding slave device uh, uh, slave select line signal to low so the if uh, the master wants to select any of uh, see the master and you have the slaves and from master to every slave there is a save select line now whenever so the master makes any of the say for example master wants to select this particular slave it will make this particular uh, lines a save select line as low now when it goes low so this is the master slave which uh, uh, will communicate with the master and that is what is written here now if spi works on uh, the uh, yeah uh, spi works on the principle of shift register that means so uh, shift register i think all of you know because you have done experiments in uh, the uh, electronic circuits lab etc um, master and slave device contain a special shift register uh, uh, for data to transmit or receive Uh, the size of this register is uh, device dependent so normally uh, it will be in multiples of 8 uh, now during transmission during transmission from master to slave uh, 